Welcome back to Telecom TV's Top 10 Mobile Moments, where we're taking a look back at our 20 years of supporting MWC and 3GSM. Now, whilst the 2002 3GSM event was the first one TelecomTV.com attended, Telecom TV, the brand, was there in 2000. Now, the brand was coined by one of our startup investors, and for trivia buffs, it was first used in Singapore for the ITU Telecom Asia event in the late 1990s. Incidentally, both myself and Martin Warwick worked on that one, moderating some panels. But moving on with Ray. Yep, we're at number nine in our top 10 countdown, and that means it's time to play the generation game. Yes, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, you get the pattern. Mobile is a generation game, with a new generation coming along with the precision of a Swiss watch every 10 years. You can't escape it. 3G started to get deployed just as the industry was reaching a major milestone, 1 billion GSM subscribers. And here's the late Rob Conway from February 2004. We expected the 1 billion mark to be reached actually in March, so follow on from here. And actually surprised it was reached last week. Uh, so we've had the nice surprise of that opportunity happening. Now what it really means is you can't rest on your laurels, right? It's great we reached one billion, now how do we get to the next billion? And so the focus now both on the GSM Association's Board of Directors and obviously I think on the community as a whole, how do we get to that next billion? What a great guy. And naturally, the one billion landmark featured prominently throughout the event that year. It was an evening of blue touch paper and red carpet. After the stunning fireworks outside and a light show from the Siemens boat shuttle, the mobile industry's great and good strolled over to a new venue for its annual gong fest. This time round, the ceremony catches the industry bubbling about the remarkable milestone of a billion GSM subscribers. Seven years ago, Andy Grove talked about a billion connected computers and a billion connected handsets. And, and it's taken a long time for that to happen. We finally came together where, where that data between the computing world and the handset world is coming together. I mean, yes, there was a one billion landmark, but who else remembers that seamanship anchored half a mile out to sea? I thankfully managed to avoid a trip on the rowboat to visit that floating vendor mothership. Never, ever, ever accept a press invite that involves a boat. But to get to the next billion, GSM still had some major battles to fight, not least around technology. Remember the seismic skirmishes at the end of the 90s over air interfaces, CDMA, and even WiMAX? Well, here's the co-founder and former chairman of Qualcomm, which employed some pretty hardcore lobbying to aid its ambitions. Although we were all BFFs by 2005, apparently. Right now, I think things are moving ahead quite well for many of the operators, many of the manufacturers. We've just come off a year with a huge number of handsets being sold. Now we're moving toward a uh, much wider spread of WCDMA. Many operators have networks that are rolled out. Handsets are coming in. So this is a year when I think we're going to see a significant transitioning from 2G to 3G, next year even more so. Handsets are coming. That's been a rallying cry for years. In fact, one of the former GSMA chairmen once suggested that GSM should stand for Godsend Mobiles. Such were the concerns in those early days. I think there's a few other things that some people think GSM stands for. <laughs> well, true to form, the industry was only just getting to grips with the wide-scale rollout of 3G, when thoughts turned naturally to 4G, some things just never change. The focus on the Gs, 2G, 3G, 4G, I, I think actually doesn't help the industry very much. That, that I, I think that beyond the days of a single monolithic air interface being the quote solution for the industry is behind us. Uh, you know, interviews today I've talked about the fact there's going to be 10 or more radios in what's going to be a 100 gram device. And making all of that work, integrating the networks and looking at it from a cost perspective for the operator or a, a use perspective from an end user is increasingly critical. The NG is a buzzword. It sounds easy, mm -hmm. but it has connotations that hurt the, the general perception. So if, if you talk about 4G, it seems to mean, seems to imply 3G is outdated, which is actually not the case. Got to agree with some of the sentiments there, but it's going to take some incredible and momentous events to get the industry to move away from the generation game. 
And let's not forget Kenny G in all of this. Absolutely not. Bobby G, perhaps? Make mine a book's fizz, please. Anyway, let's end with some sage advice from Rob Conway from back in 2004. You know, we've had the 2G wave, 2.5G wave, now we're moving into the 3G wave, although we've, we've been getting a little bit shy about talking about Gs anymore because there's a point at which you start talking about 4G, and I had a vendor the other day had an advertisement for 5G, and there's a point at which we as, 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 as operators really look at the execution aspect and say, wait a minute, we've got to digest and be able to execute and implement uh, on behalf of our consumers what's in front of us right now, rather than thinking the 5G that might somewhere be out there that some vendor might be pushing as a natural matter of what they do. Oh, how things have changed. Not. Oh, you're right there. And we place this moment at number nine in our top 10 countdown, but what do you think? Any memories to share? Please get in touch with us, email, LinkedIn, or the form on the website. But stay tuned because coming up next is number eight.